It's no secret that the Extol F1 Ultra Laser has some pretty awesome features. It will cost you $4,000, but dang, they are awesome features. Extol claims we can run through bulk laser projects faster than a caffeinated rabbit with their optional conveyor feeder attachment. Well, I'm technically paraphrasing, but that's what they said. Not really, they just said it was fast. But we are going to look at the different aspects of the conveyor along with a short tutorial to see how it performs with real world testing. I am not going crazy in depth for the sake of a analysis paralysis, but I hope this video gives you some confident takeaways you will find useful. Creative Space is still in beta, so we may run into some bugs that I know will be fixed, so just letting you know. So part one, why would you want the conveyor feeder attachment? Extol made the conveyor feeder attachment for one purpose, batching projects fast with streamlined production for engraving larger materials. The whole idea behind the conveyor is to boost productivity by allowing continuous operation without the need to meticulously line up materials. You can flop them right on the bed of the conveyor and the software will recognize the shape of the material and keep a journal entry for the other shapes so it can fill in the designs intelligently. So if you are a small business pumping out multiple items, I can see where this would free up some time. And for part two, setup. The conveyor attaches by screwing a bracket onto the conveyor and a bracket on the middle of the Ultra's base plate with the provided screws and screwdriver. I want to point out this is not a cheap piece of plastic. This is heavy duty aluminum and even the screws feel premium. I think you can always tell the quality of a product by the screws they provide you with. Nothing is worse than spending a bunch of money than they send you the cheapest screws. So good job Extol. Part 3 Location Since we are using the conveyor attachment, we need to make sure we have enough room. I use and recommend the adjustable Husky benches from Home Depot. They are sturdy and you can move them around. I prefer this over building a desk because I often change where I engrave at and I will have these tables the rest of my life. Part four, projects and tutorial. Okay guys, for the first project, we are going to do what every other YouTuber who has the F1 Ultra does, and that is business cards. Now we're gonna run through this fast because I have creative space open, and I wanna show you how this works. We're gonna speed through this kind of fast, so that way you won't get hung up for hours on this one part. So the first thing we want to do is to lay the business cards out on the conveyor feeder. Now we can't lay it way far out here or up here because this camera has to take a picture and it needs to really be in the confounds in between the sliding glass there. All right, you see how I'm doing that or otherwise it's gonna be out of the frame of the camera. Now that we got that on, we're gonna come over here to the mode on XCS. You see where it says conveyor batch? Obviously we're batching these. So I'm gonna click that, click refresh and let's see what happens. Perfect. And you see how I'm circling the cards right here. You see how I got that directly under the center. You can't put these cards too far out. So remember that. So now we are going to import my logo. This is going to be black. So it may be a little hard to see. So there we go. And that one card I'm gonna put this on is a little messy. Yeah, you can see it right there. I could probably make that just a tad bit straighter, but you get the idea. Now I am going to go to the easy set panel, turn this to Jarvis, turn this to fiber, and there are probably better, uh, <laughs> better ways to do this, but I'm gonna make this really fast. I'm gonna put the power on 90, and we're just gonna leave that like it is um, for the sake of the video. Okay, for the next thing we're gonna do, we are going to hit frame out material. Do you see how this framed out the material? Creative Space is telling the Ultra, hey, we are engraving these rectangles. And this is how the algorithm works. This is how they are going to place the logo on all of them. So I'm gonna hit save. And you know what? We're gonna hit process. Let's see what happens. Now it's recognizing the material and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, now this did pretty good. Now it left one card out. So at this point I was putting down business cards and the software wasn't picking up all of them. Now I did this test before and it was working fine. It just that one blunder at the beginning of this uh, kind of messed the rest of this up, but this is still working pretty good. Don't you love this little controller? It's so cool. Oh, I forgot my glasses. So I'm gonna go over here and get them. Okay guys, we have two more cards here. I'm gonna just put it on the streamline and see what happens, okay? Well, that's weird. Like I said, guys, this is beta software, all right? So it's gonna have some bugs. I know other people didn't have this problem, but okay, guys, we are finished. You can see that we had a hiccup 
XCS did not recognize one of the cards. To be fair, this is still in beta and I expect bugs to happen. This actually happened to me in my review video and I ran it again and Creative Space saw all of the shapes. So I'm not gonna redo this test just to show you how okay it picked it up this time. But uh, overall, this is looking good. Everything engraved nice, and I'll show some B-roll here. Everything was nice and in the center of the card. And as far as accuracy, I'm not seeing any problem, guys. Uh, this is pretty accurate. To, I turned the card sideways and stuff, so uh, no complaints there. The logo came out perfect on every single card. The logo is in the center. And uh, yeah, it's pretty consistent across all of them. This makes me trust this a little bit more because that's my biggest fear is this not being accurate with business cards if I'm making these for different clients. So let's move on to the next project. Okay guys, for the next test, we are going to do some of these dog tags. You see how I'm leaving a little bit of space right here? I'm gonna do that so when this moves over, everything will be in frame. Okay guys, we are going to do a simple engraving that says test. So just like before, we are going to hit frame out material and let's see what happens. Okay, there we go guys. Do you see that? Now we got it all on there. And Xtool did say on the other screen that if it's highly reflective, it may not pick it up. So that may have been my bad for not rerunning that. Okay guys, this is good. Let's see what happens. It's gonna stop and did I get it? I think I got it in there right. You see the little gap here? This is what we need to go for. So it's gonna take it a second to see the materials and I shouldn't have done that. This may mess up now. I'm gonna keep this on camera just in case it messes up because I don't think I needed to move that. So this may engrave the bed and I'm gonna leave this live just to see, moment of truth, guys, moment of truth. Let's see here. No, okay, good deal, yep, okay, it moved it just a little bit. I shouldn't have moved that. I thought it was on top of the other ones and I was gonna try to fix it, but there is already a snapshot made. Okay, we're gonna put this right here. This is so fun, guys, so cool. It's gonna stop, it's gonna be and the other parts are dropping down there. And let's see what happens. There we go. Guys, it's so cool, so cool. And now we get to stop this because it is done. Okay guys, that was a successful test. As you can see here, test. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, the only mistake I made was moving that one and the one that I moved got a little off, but the camera already took a snapshot of it and I was trying to fix it which that was a stupid mistake. I did that in my review video. I didn't show you guys and that kind of burnt the conveyor belt a little bit. So I had to fix that real fast. So anyway, guys, this worked fantastic. And as far as the cards here, it's highly reflective and it was my bad. I should have re-ran that test and turned the lights inside of Creative Space. It has a setting for light where I can turn the brightness down and it would have picked up my cards the first time. So that was my mistake. So, um, but anyway, guys, that's good. Let's move on. Okay, guys, we have a boat paddle on here and the length that I want engraved is 13 inches, which turns out to be about 300 millimeters. So if you look at my computer, you can see that I have this rectangle and I have the output on off. And I did learn that from Bittner Built Woodworking. So thank you, Bittner. You always have the best ideas. And I have my logo inside and it's not quite as long because I don't want it to run out. So anyway, everything is looking good here, guys. I am going to process right here and let's see what happens. Okay guys, here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay guys, this turned out pretty cool, but don't be like I am. I'm a little lazy. I didn't move my logo down and center it up like a dummy. So um, anyway, this turned out nice. As this was going forward, everything was just smooth. There is no jittering or anything else like that. It was smooth. And this looks great other than I should have lined this up better and moved the logo down. But um, if you're doing large materials like this, hey, it's uh, 
It's working. I don't know what to say. It's working. It looks good. So who will truly benefit from the conveyor feeder? Hobbyists and small business owners, I want to directly speak to you. The F1 Ultra is a pretty compact machine as it is. Adding the conveyor feeder doesn't take up that much room. It is a little longer than my OG D1 Pro you can see here. The compact form will allow for easy storage and flexibility. Now, if you aren't worried about the space, that is fine, but I promise you, the older you get, how big something is will matter to you. It will happen. And now for bulking orders. You need to understand Xtol made the F1 Ultra for a certain niche. People who are buying this machine are using it to make money. Yes, there are hobbyists out there using it just because, but it is made to be a tool to generate resources. Bulking large jobs at a faster speed will in turn make you more money. Some of you up on here like Matt, you're just trying to sell me on this. I am not, I am giving you my straightforward advice. If you need a machine that can engrave metal and bulk the same projects for clients, the conveyor feeder will pay for itself. And as far as the pricing, the Ultra is $4,000 plus $400 for the conveyor feeder. That is a lot. I know it is, guys. I said this in my official review of the Ultra. At this price point, it is an investment, if you will use it, that is. Now, personally, if I am already spending 4K, spending another 10% for the conveyor feeder attachment doesn't bother me, only because I know I will get my money back. If you are on a crazy budget and really want the Ultra but don't plan to bulk materials, then skip it. I mean, you can always get it at a later time. You don't technically have to buy it right now. The conveyor feeder just adds another dimension of flexibility and saves time. And as far as versatility, we can engrave almost any material. The F1 Ultra seems to be establishing itself as a one-man band, I guess you can say. So if you don't want to buy a fiber laser and a blue diode laser and jump back and forth between the two, you can have it all in one package. If there were any drawbacks to the Ultra, it would probably be the cutting of large materials. I have some friends online that make huge signs and I know they won't be able to give up their P2CO2 laser for this task. While the Ultra can't cut on the conveyor belt, it does give a decent amount of cutting room on the provided slat plates. So this is something you need to be aware of and keep your demands reasonable in the cutting department with the Ultra. So to sum all of this up, the F1 Ultra has turned out to be a great laser. I have been using this for a little over a month now and I have had no problems with the dependability whatsoever. When you add the conveyor attachment into the mix, it frees up time and makes things even more productive from my experience. So overall, x made a pretty awesome machine that fills the gap for small business owners looking for versatility. I am using this right about 98% of the time right now and I don't plan to stop. I know there are other detailed videos out there about this conveyor feeder, but I wanted to give you guys a simple look with straightforward knowledge you can digest. Now, if you would like to know more about this laser, I will post my affiliate link below. And as always, I will try to have any current promo code so you guys can be confident that you are getting the best price. Now, I appreciate all of your support for using my links. I'm just a guy doing what I love and every little bit helps me to continue making videos like this. I appreciate you guys so much. Drop me a comment below if you have any questions.